What is good? What is good? This is Daz Bones back and better than ever. You are tuned in with Fame from Real Streamcast back with more of the little things in life that you love to talk about. Man, and we are just doing a nice little change of pace here. We bring you guys a nice change of pace with the series that we've recently just got. I'll say for me, I've gotten a little obsessed with because this has really been hitting for me on so many different levels. This is the, the first season of The Shy Review. And what I love so much about this show early on is that you get to see the interlocking web of storylines yeah. different characters from other like other sides of town from different walks of life are just becoming involved because they don't know each other but they have a mutual friend or it's a mutual relative or somebody that they knew from a while back yeah. and it's just now coming back in the swing of things that relationship reconnects or it takes an entirely different path because of some random interaction yeah and to, to start off we get a few main storylines a few main characters we get like the, the character tracy who we get yeah. introduced to early when her son jason roxborough gets murdered yeah. and that is really what kicks off the entire first season and the the ripples and the after effects of that is really just what makes this show something that we can say we, we know and love it now it's it's definitely just the beginning just that beginning scene where you get the the death of Jace. You see just how one character gets involved and then it just takes off from there. We get Kugi, you know, he's just trying to get some money off body. And to some people you know, that that are, that are watching the show, it's nothing new to see something like that because I know in Chicago it's a different world in there. And, and I don't mean that in no kind of negative way at all. I'm saying city of Chicago, there's so much that goes on in there. Exactly. And that's why the show does such a great job at just diving in. Even though I have my issues because there are some plot holes that goes on in the show, I do love the way that Lena Waithe is able to give us insight on just some of these characters. And so you get Kugi who's taking stuff from, you know, Jason's body. And then he gets caught up by the police. Yeah, and that's just a <laughs> yeah. situation yeah. of wrong place, wrong time. Exactly. Which is really what you can like say is the overarching narrative with the, a lot of these things and a lot of the issues that we run into with this story. Yeah. And along with that, another main character we get is Ronnie, who yeah. is Jason's stepfather, who reconnects with Tracy through this. And he is the You know how I feel about Ronnie. <laughs> you know how I feel about Ronnie. Season one's number one, like public enemy number one man. of season one, man, is Ronnie. And he's just, I guess this brings up the thing of redemption because he feels like he is finally in a position to redeem himself by reconnecting with Tracy as she kind of poses the challenge of do something. You yeah. say you love him, you say that he was your son. Well, do something about it, Ronnie. Yeah. We see that what he decides to do is make it worse. <laughs> it's like literally the house is burning down. You try to put out a fire with gasoline. That's what Ronnie pretty much does. He, he makes the situation worse because instead of, he he, ta he goes off the advice of yeah, Officer, Officer Cruz. Cruz. He goes off the advice of Cruz and just some tip that he gave him. He said, and, she said. Yeah, and he ends up killing Coogie. Yep. And Coogie didn't kill him. And so it's just like, you ended up killing a kid and then now you get introduced to Coogie's family. Brandon, I'm sorry. <laughs> you get into Mr. Brandon, now becoming chef, and his girlfriend Jericho, who heavy yeah. into real estate. And this is also uh, an opportunity for us to get introduced to Kevin because he's a young whippersnapper yeah. in <laughs> in the city, and he's only like a, he's like a 12, 11 year old kid. Yeah, yeah he was in middle school. Yeah, and he, he stumbles upon Ronnie and Coogie, and he sees Ronnie kill him, and that's kind of another event of wrong place, wrong time because. He was just another innocent kid minding his own business. And now he just gets thrown into all of this the same way Coogie does, except he doesn't directly get involved because yeah. he doesn't decide to come up to the body mm -hmm. and take the money or yeah. try to get like the, the quick that's, lick off of That's a pretty cool parallel because you see the different things that these characters do. Like mm -hmm. when, when Jason got shot, Coogie went up to the body. This is something that, you know, it was almost kind of like a thing of curiousness slash, you know, I'm gonna get something. I'm gonna get something yeah, from it. Like, like, like an opportunity. Yeah. Versus when Kev, when Kevin saw what happened to Coogie, it was like I'm gone. <laughs> it was fear, and so it's just like that's the different levels of mindset that there are when it comes to death. And it's like, I didn't think really. That's good. Yeah. yeah and there's like idea. different levels of innocence, kind of. Absolutely. He's the younger kid, and then you have Coogie, who is a little bit more experienced. He's mm -hmm. seen like not directly involved in the street yeah. life, but he's been exposed to it a little bit more. So that was not something that abnormal to him. Yeah. So he was kind of able to deal with it by, okay, this is an opportunity, like you said, to, to have a come up despite this unfortunate event happening. Yeah. Just seeing how everything is just spiraling out of control is just off rip. This isn't a show where you really get to see just at the end of each episode, it's a happy ending. 
it just goes from you really have to take it one day at a time like That's all it. of these characters and yeah. you have to just you can't wait for a good thing to happen you have to just make something happen for yourself you really have to impose your will on the things around you mm -hmm. in order to get the things you want or in order to just make progress just to, just to survive it's just taking it day by day these people, they're, they're going through life the best way that they know how. And it's, and that's why, I guess, for me, I just did not like Rock. Because it was like, it was a guy that had completely given up. Yeah. He was drinking all the time. He was living with his grandma. And his, Miss Ethel was amazing. I love, I yeah. love Miss Ethel. But it was just, you get, there's a lot of side or supporting characters that eventually get bigger roles as we go through, you know, as we go through the seasons like Papa and Jake and Reg and, you know, I don't consider the 63rd Street Mob the main antagonist. Considered Ronnie, he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, come on, you kill a kid, man. Yeah, you kill and, a kid. Like, in, in a way, 63rd Street Mob, who are supposed to be the quote unquote antagonist, they are really watching over a lot of the kids because, yeah. of course, directly through Reg, whose brother is one of the main leaders in the in the, in the street mob, Reggie. Yeah. And then you have so what, Trice. Hmm? Yeah, no, Trice. not Trice. Oh, well, oh, Reg is like under Trice. But Trice, Reg yeah, is yeah. Somebody who is, yeah. Even though he's considered a street guy in the end he's just trying to look over his brother. look it. after his brother, his brother and that's it. even though he doesn't necessarily have the best means he's showing them what he knows yeah. the street life is all he knows so he's just unfortunately and yeah. this is what you're gonna get yeah. and <laughs> jake is a product of his environment just like kevin is that's like it. he has a different level of innocence and then the nice little dynamic that jake papa and kev have is interesting because you have one kid that's kind of directly in the middle with kev who yeah. has seen the violence and then he has a friend like jake who's all the way on the on the left, mm -hmm. who is completely into the street life and has that direct exposure Take with his brother. <laughs> yeah. And then you got yeah. Papa, who's on the right, who's your like, prototypical yeah. church kid. Yeah. He's yeah. always like positive. The, the good angel in the, in the yeah. bad, and yeah. the, the, the little devil. That's what, it, that's what it is to me. Like, Jake is the, if I want it, I'm going to take it. Just like you saw in the first episode with Kev, like Andrea, girl. yeah, mm -hmm. Andrea, and then Kev ended up getting her number. He's like, "Well, you took too long." And it's yeah. like you're gonna see how that kind of plays out in the futures to come. But yeah, and that was, was a like, nice hey, man, I know that you like, but you took too long, bro. Like, I'm, not, I'm not gonna wait just because you out of respect. I waited. Not, but those are not good friends, guys. Just saying. But yeah, no, yeah, seriously, you're right. <laughs> oh man, no. yeah. The, the the dynamic of each of these characters is, is very interesting and just to see the lengths that they're willing to, to go for each other is very interesting yeah. because uh, another guy who you could definitely say gains a, a more prominent role later on but who is yeah. definitely uh, taking it day by day and doesn't really know how to think ahead is my boy <laughs> Emmett man he like your, your prototypical neighborhood sneakerhead man oh, he man. doesn't know what a rubber is this is good. <laughs> my boy is 18 19 three kids from three different baby three mamas kids, doesn't want to claim one of them but he doesn't want to work he is going through the gauntlet bro. <laughs> he is really going through the gauntlet hey, he's working at Sonny's Chicken he's yeah. working at Sonny's Chicken he's got a little shoe flipping deal bro. and it's like you want to a part, a part of me wants to feel bad for him because it's damn you on, got what? redeeming qualities exactly he's, he's not a bad kid it's just he makes stupid decisions and I think you see in that season his mom has a gradual release of him and it's like, you gotta go I gotta let you go <laughs> I gotta let you go in order you go. for you yeah. to realize the full error of your ways and to fully grasp the responsibility right. that you have created for yourself by bringing these lives into the world. Yeah. I gotta let you go. I'm not going to let you. No longer can you put extra stress on me because you cannot handle your mistakes you created. For I don't want to call children mistakes, but mm -hmm. your actions. Yeah. <laughs> your actions. Because you can't deal with the consequences. I'm going to make you figure out how you need to deal with these consequences. And that is kind of an extension for all of these main characters. This is a lesson that they're all learning in their own ways. Brandon definitely with how he has to deal with his brother Kubi situation after his death we find out his... really quickly who killed Coogie. it's i thought that was gonna be like a season finale thing that happened like episode two or three early early, early he found out who killed his brother so yeah it's, and it's, we what? see how just see how this show is like spiraling in and out of control yeah. as these character stories interlock and intertwine with each other as episode and episode goes on and, and i think that's what really brought people into this show Lena Waithe did a great job at making sure that we were all seeing realistic things that happen, things that people have been through, things that people are going through. And so that's why I really love just what happened, how things turned out. So yeah. Yeah, more to come, definitely. This is some of her best work. I'm hoping to see this series skyrocket and get the, the due diligence and the respect that it deserves. Because yeah. it's definitely something that has, has taken, I, I say the country, by storm because it's providing a very unique oh, yeah. uh, unique perspective to a show. I don't think we've really got a show based on a city 
that really gives you just an entirely entirely black perspective on yeah i would say a lot of those people that watch power watch snowfall usually those kind of people are watching this kind of show mm -hmm. and so that's why everybody was talking you need to watch the shot you need to watch the shot i was like cool let's get into it and then when i was watching i found out you were watching it i was like oh yeah we gotta do this yeah, we got to. It's like <laughs> Snowfall meets Power and The Wire 2.0 all like mixed into one. And then you get some of those sitcom feel good neighborhood. And yeah, there's some good moments in there. Cosby show moments yeah, there's some, good, there's some good moments in there. We got this black excellence, black culture just had its greatest. So I definitely agree with that. Absolutely. More to come from Rashad, more to come from Rich Dreamcast, man. Please tune in, like, comment, subscribe. Any feedback is greatly appreciated, man. This has been Daz Bones. Fame here from Rich Dreamcast. And you know the little song is Blues Twice. <laughs>